Hello, everyone, and welcome to the big CPAS Market Opportunity for Service Providers webinar. I'm very pleased to introduce our special guest, Raul Castañón, Senior Analyst with 451 Research, and Kevin Nethercott, VP of Business Development at Telestax. Now, before we get started with today's live webinar, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. All participants are in listen-only mode for the duration of the webinar, but we do encourage you to chat any questions uh, to the speakers in the Q&A box located at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. And we will do our best to get all of your questions answered by the end of today's session. Now with that, I'd like to turn today's live webinar over to Raul. Raul, please go ahead. Thank you and uh, welcome everyone to our webinar. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, so to get started, uh, I just want to provide a, a quick overview of the topics that we will be covering in the webinar. And um, uh, for the first part of the webinar, uh, we will start with a quick background information and an operational definition for CPAS. We will look at the competitive landscape. In other words, who is going after this opportunity? We will talk a little bit about the role that CSPs uh, can play in the value chain and why we believe they should be paying attention to this market opportunity. And uh, we will close the first part of the webinar with some key takeaways before I hand it over to Kevin, who will tell us a little bit more about how Telestack uh, and CPAS enablement work. Uh, Maria, I'm having a little bit trouble. I don't, I don't see the slides moving. If you can move to uh, the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, a little bit of background information on CPAS. Now, uh, officially, CPAS has been around for about 10 years. Uh, the term initially associated with the emergence of cloud-based providers of telecom APIs like Twilio and Nexmo. We should mention, however, that if we want to be very precise, providing APIs for accessing the, the PSDN has actually been around much longer than that, so probably closer to 20 years with a number of initiatives from vendors and telcos. However, the industry has more or less settled on placing the emergence of CPAS around 2008, which is the year that uh, Twilio was founded. Um, so that, that, um, that's valid and that's uh, the uh, official narrative in the industry. There are a couple of things, however, that uh, get my attention here. The first one is that this narrative uh, kind of leaves out the role that service providers have played from the beginning. Uh, secondly, it puts the spotlight on cloud-based providers rather than the telcos, even though in its early days, CPAS was actually defined in terms of PSD and uh, connectivity. So, you know, just something to ponder about. Um, so, um, let's look now at a quick operational definition for CPAS. Um, this is a topic that we've been looking at uh, at 451 Research for the last five uh, years, and it's, uh, it's evolving uh, rapidly. The definition that we have settled on basically refers to the uh, approaches that vendors have for delivering communications APIs, um, including voice, video, chat, uh, and messaging. And there's uh, different ways of doing this. And we will get into a little bit uh, of, of uh, more detail in, into the competitive landscape. Uh, now, uh, understanding the competitive landscape uh, for us has actually proven to be uh, quite an endeavor. It, it's a rather complex uh, landscape for many uh, different re reasons. One of them, uh, we believe, is the fact that the segment has been largely defined by vendors, and by this we mean that vendors have been using it to articulate their value proposition uh, in a somewhat loose way um, to identify a wide range of uh, approaches and, and technologies for uh, delivering communications APIs. Now this in itself 
it's not a bad thing. This is a segment that in many ways, it's still emerging, it's rapidly evolving. So it makes sense that they articulate their value propositions in terms that will be familiar to their target audience. The problem, however, uh, comes when we try to compare vendors side by side. So that, that's one of the uh, challenges that we have uh, when looking at this uh, segment. Um, so to address this problem, we recently published a report where we mapped the competitive landscape for CPES. Um, we identified 18 vendors. There are many more. We are aware of that. However, we um, look for an, a, a number of vendors that are representative of the industry. And then we define a framework that builds on four uh, criteria to identify how these vendors define their product and go-to-market strategies. Uh, so uh, more importantly for uh, our audience today, uh, this uh, helps us articulate how we see uh, the market opportunity and understand who is going after this opportunity. So the criteria that we um, use to uh, understand the market is uh, the table that you have on the screen. We basically look at connectivity, meaning does the vendor provide access to the PSDN, is it IP-based services or both? We also look at geographic coverage, basically dividing the market into those vendors that focus strictly in the U.S. market and those that focus in the U.S. and rest of the world, in other words, uh, global vendors. We also look at their API offering, meaning are they vertically focused? Uh, we're talking here about vendors such as BDO and TalkBox that are strictly uh, focused on, on video, or do they have a wide range of communications APIs? Uh, like Twilio, Nexmo, and so on. The last criteria um, refers uh, or differentiates between CPaaS vendors and CPaaS enablement, which is where um, Telestax falls. And this is a more um, recent and interesting development in this segment. We actually believe this can be a game changer for the industry. So uh, let me tell you why we, uh, we believe this. Um, so the... Um, competitive landscape built on these four major uh, categories. And we used this landscape uh, for another report that is coming up uh, very soon. It will probably be published within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, it's the CPAS market monitor, uh, where we identify key players and provide a market forecast and market share analysis to better understand how the market is evolving. Um, now, um, like I mentioned, this is a report that will be published uh, very soon, but we do have some preliminary results that we're uh, very excited to share with you in this webinar. Um, so based on those uh, four categories and the 18-plus uh, vendors, we're actually right now uh, at 20, and the number will probably grow a little bit more. Uh, we apply the market monitor methodology from 451 Research, which is a bottom-up analysis. Um, it entails looking at key vendors, uh, revenue, projected growth, and we aggregate all, all of this information and feed it into our forecast. So the last uh, conversation just this morning with our VP uh, that heads the data sciences team, our um, estimate for 2017 is, uh, for CPAS, is 1.6 billion, and we expect it will grow to more than 6 billion in the next five years uh, by 2022. This translates into approximately a 31% uh, compounded annual growth rate. So that's a significant growth. Um, I do want to clarify, um, these are still preliminary results. Uh, we don't expect the final numbers will be uh, significantly different. Um, and another thing to clarify is that this um, might be uh, slightly different to other forecasts that you might see out there in the market. Uh, and one of the main reasons is that we are focusing on vendors and services uh, that look at high value interactions that are mission critical and therefore require enterprise grade reliability. So to give you a better idea, we're not including, for example, messaging aggregation, uh, which is a, a sub-segment um, that is typically associated with CPES. Um, it's very commodified. Uh, we're rather paying attention at the high uh, value transactions. 
Um, so to dig in a little bit deeper about um, CPAS uh, as a market opportunity, uh, the way we look at it, we uh, believe it is one of the fastest growing categories in business uh, communications. Um, it has evolved significantly since its early days. Um, the early definition of, of CPAS in terms of PSTN connectivity has been significantly surpassed and has been augmented with a broad range of services that are now available. What hasn't changed, however, is that CPAS plays a critical role when it comes to digital transformation. Uh, and by this, we mean how organizations redefine how they create and, and deliver value. We believe that CPAS will provide the infrastructure for emerging technologies uh, driving business communications. And this includes a lot of the trends that uh, we are uh, following right now, such as mobile native communications, digital assistance, voice commerce. And uh, more importantly, uh, we can look at this as the second stage in CPAS. If we think about how companies like Airbnb, Lyft, Uber, these are the uh, famous startups uh, that were driving the growth of uh, CPAS vendors like Twilio and Nexmo, the disruptors in, in their uh, respective industries of hospitality and transportation. Uh, when we look at their growth, it is uh, uh, tightly associated to how they leverage peer-to-peer -peer and application-to-peer communications in order to enable interactions between supply and demand. And we believe that these companies not only redefine the end user experience, but they also redefine for these industries how organizations create and deliver value. Um, this is largely how we think of uh, in terms of the first stage in the evolution of CPAS. And we believe that we're now uh, going into uh, the second stage, or as um, some analysts refer to as CPAS 2.0. And the main driver for growth will be the enterprise segment, in contrast to the initial adopters, which were uh, mainly developers and startups. So this presents a, a lot of uh, really interesting and, and exciting opportunities. And we believe that CSPs actually uh, have a very interesting play. Um, so um, let me get into the details of why we, we believe this. Um, so we talked a little bit about uh, CPAS as the underlying infrastructure for digital transformation. That's a term that is uh, used a lot. I'm aware that it's one of those buzzwords that um, can, can um, uh, convey and uh, articulate um, transformation in, in organizations, but it can also uh, kind of uh, end up uh, meaning uh, nothing at all. So let me just get into the details. Uh, so when we talk about these game changers like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, WhatsApp, the early adopters uh, for CPAS, we believe this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the CPAS market opportunity. And we expect there will be significant growth, uh, mainly as a result of more organizations launching digital transformation initiatives. Uh, the numbers that you see on the screen come from 451 Research Voice of the Connected User Landscape Survey on Digital Transformation. This is a quarterly survey with a panel of 1,500 IT decision makers where we ask them about uh, business technology buying plans. In other words, how will they be allocating budget in the next 12 months? And um, as you can see, um, the, uh, wh where IT decision makers are focused on uh, uh, right now in terms of the um, early early adopters, approximately f uh, one third of companies of uh, survey respondents uh, already have a formal strategy for digitizing their businesses. The counterpart is that this means that a large majority of enterprises have not yet uh, initiated or maybe they are in the planning stage uh, in terms of uh, digital initiatives. Now this is a really interesting breakdown uh, because it typically translates into a market that is moving from the early adopters to the mainstream majority. So that's where we are right now. 
Uh, now, when we talk about digital uh, transformation, uh, again, what does that mean exactly? And how does this translate into a market opportunity for CPAS and CSPs? Uh, you can see that the two top drivers for software uh, investments in uh, the enterprise are improving the customer experience and reducing cost through operational efficiencies. Uh, so the way we look at this is that enterprises are looking for the technologies that will help them solve business problems. We don't usually come across companies that are looking uh, specifically for, for, for CPAS um, as such, uh, but rather technology that will help them improve the customer experience. And this uh, means they are trying to solve business problems in terms of, uh, for example, interaction with their customers, partners, employees via, uh, for example, push notifications, uh, click to call capabilities for uh, voice and video to factor secure authentication, uh, and so on. So it translates into actual uh, solutions to real uh, business problems. Now, um, where are we in terms of the competitive landscape? So let me just go back quickly to this topic uh, very quickly. We talked a little bit about the evolution of CPAS, uh, the first uh, CPAS uh, stage, CPAS uh, 1.0, largely defined by companies like Nexmo, uh, Twilio, and um, their uh, clients like Uber, Lyft, WhatsApp, and so on. Um, and then CPAS 2.0, where the growth will largely be defined by the enterprise segment. We believe this is a significant shift in terms of uh, how the market is uh, evolving uh, and basically translates into a different way in which communication services are delivered and consumed. Um, the uh, business model for uh, companies like Twilio, uh, they're basically uh, the poster child for, for the platform model with the uh, pay-as-you-go uh, zero marginal cost, which basically refers to uh, lower costs or costs trending to uh, zero um, um, when scaling to thousands and hundreds of thousands of users. Uh, they basically uh, are value-based um, on supply-demand interaction, meaning they bring together supply, demand and then the pricing and who will pay for the service will depend on the value of the transaction for each of those parties. These companies are very uh, strongly uh, developer focused and they have a strong investment in R&D. Um, so these, um, th this basically defines uh, companies like Twilio that are uh, the benchmark for CPAS, but we believe the market is changing and it is changing even for companies like Twilio. Um, so even though uh, they are largely considered a threat uh, to the telcos of the world, we also believe they are redefining uh, the game and actually providing a framework for delivering and monetizing real-time communications. And that is where we believe CSPs should be focusing their attention on. Uh, so in other words, we don't believe that competing head-to-head uh, -head, uh, with them will be a winning game, but rather it will be based on the natural evolution of CPAS, which will uh, take from this business model that we're looking at right now, but it will have to be adapted uh, because it does not uh, translate literally to the enterprise segment, first of all, and secondly, it can be adapted in a way that can play to the uh, strengths of uh, CSPs. Uh, and, and that's where we uh, see the, the market moving. Um, so if we take a closer look at a company like Twilio, um, and that's the benchmark really for uh, all the CPAS vendors out there. Um, in their um, last uh, annual results for fiscal year uh, 2017, they uh, reported uh, that nearly 50% of the company's headcount is focused on R&D and engineering, um, and, and R&D accounts for approximately 30% of their revenue, 
while their sales and marketing organization has approximately 358 employees. And this is considering significant changes they have made in their organization where they are um, expanding their uh, direct sales in order to prepare for the enterprise segment. Now, um, probably the first question that might come to mind looking at uh, Twilio's strategy is, well, how are CSPs supposed to uh, compete with a vendor uh, like this? Uh, and they're known for their uh, innovation and heavy investments in R&D. Um, that's where CPAS enablement comes in. So let me get into the details of this. Uh, we see the CPAS market evolving in a much different way to where it is right now. Um, so first of all, we see the players that are out there right now diverging into one of two camps. Um, first of all, you have the CPAS pure play vendors, and um, that's where uh, Twilio is positioned, as well as uh, other companies like uh, CLX, with its uh, respective acquisitions of Shura, Cinch, <laughs> excuse me, and Blocks. Um, bandwidth is also positioned in this space. You also have TeleSign with uh, uh, Bix, and, and even um, um, emerging vendors like, like FreeSpeak. Uh, we also have a second camp, which we position more in the enterprise communications play where we have uh, Cisco uh, with the uh, capability with the acquisition of Tropo. Uh, we also have uh, MyTail uh, and even more with the acquisition of PostureTail. And then uh, a couple of vendors that made recent acquisitions and that could be Alcatel Lucent with Zipwise and then West with the acquisition of, uh, of FlowRoute. So this, um, uh, the, the line is not really very clearly defined. There's a lot of overlap, but we believe this, uh, this is the direction that these vendors are trending to. In fact, uh, the vendors in the second column, uh, with the exception of IntelliPeer typically, um, have kind of shed the CPAS uh, moniker in their, in their positioning, which makes it uh, really, really interesting. Now, another interesting factor here is um, that vendors like Bandwidth and, and FlowRoute, now a part of West, are actually competitive local exchange carriers, which we uh, think makes the competitive landscape even more uh, interesting for CSPs. Now, there's a third uh, option here that is also emerging, which is where Telestax plays, and that's the uh, CPAS enablement, and that's where we see uh, the opportunity for CSPs. Now, uh, even though there's uh, this kind of highlights how different the strategies for the different vendors are, uh, it's important to know that they're all going after the same opportunity. Uh, if we can boil it down, it's, uh, we're still talking about embedded uh, real-time communications. We're talking about the enterprise segment uh, and, and, and the particular requirements. Um, that they have, um, and all uh, focused on solving business problems. So that, that's how we see um, the uh, market evolving, and this is how we see the uh, uh, players uh, positioning themselves. So uh, we are aware that even though we just published the report on the competitive landscape, we expect that we will probably have to make significant changes to that report uh, within the next year. So with this in mind, uh, I'd like to close uh, the first uh, part of the webinar with some key takeaways, a, a quick review. Um, so first of all, we see uh, real-time communications uh, emerging as a critical component for digital um, transformation. Um, we believe that the big opportunity for CPAS lies in the enterprise segment, and that it uh, entails a number of challenges uh, that will make uh, the playing field different uh, for CPAS providers, and it also plays well with key strengths uh, for CSPs. Now, the market has largely been uh, defined 
defined until now by SIPA's providers. Uh, but this opens up uh, an interesting opportunity uh, for CSPs uh, to reinsert or redefine how uh, they play in, in the value chain. So the question is, uh, what is the game um, they want to play? So uh, with this in mind, this concludes my section, and I'll, ha I'll be happy to take any questions afterwards. And uh, Right now, I'd like to hand it over to Kevin. Thank you, Raul. That was great information. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to be excited or scared. So I think that's, that's kind of where we probably all are in this conversation as we look at where CPAS has come from and, and where it's going. Um, what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes with everyone and talk through more specifically the role that the CSP is playing and the opportunity there as well as look at um, specific enterprises and what they're starting to do and how that fits into, you know, kind of the next generation of, of communications. Um, if we look at where we're at today as kind of a traditional service provider, whether I'm a voice provider or whether I'm an SMS aggregator, um, everybody wants a piece of me. Um, we've got over-the-top types of um, consumer-based applications that are coming in. Raul just shared a lot of detail on how the retail CPaaS players are now kind of coming over the walls, so to speak, and targeting directly um, the enterprise, which today obviously are customers of traditional um, carriers. And so we're seeing that as new competition. Um, we're seeing voice continue to be competitive and you know, revenues or at least margins drop on that front. Um, UCAS is a quickly growing um, enhanced service that many of us are in that business. But uh, we're also seeing now that SMS is um, a key feature that needs to be supported. And most of us probably aren't in the SMS business yet, so how do I do that? And then I think where it really boils down to is Raul's data on the fact that enterprises are now moving into this digitalization um, area within their own organization. And how do we play in that? How do we keep the customers and really get to um, those high margin opportunities that that will provide over our networks? So during um, my session here, we're going to do uh, two or three simple polls. Um, I'd like to start here with the first one and then ask all those that are on the call here today, if you have implemented um, SMS-based services in, in your network. Um, have you already deployed your own? Do you have your own SMS gateway in your network? Um, have you deployed by outsourcing to an aggregator or someone else? Are you in the planning stages? Um, or did you not realize maybe that SMS was even an option for you as a, as a service provider? So let's uh, give you just a couple of minutes to, uh, to click through and, uh, and answer this so we can get a sense of, of where you're at and, and what you're looking at. The reason I ask this question is that we see SMS actually as a significant component of the CPaaS story. If you look at the retail CPaaS players, well over 50% of their revenue is typically associated with messaging. And so that becomes you know, an important part of, of the plan. So um, let's see, we've got 10, let's see, we've got 40, 50, 60 people on the call. Let's see how many of uh, what our results are looking at here. Good. So it looks like SMS is, is making some progress. Um, we'll continue to monitor this as, as more um, data comes in. So where we're at today in most cases is that as traditional voice or SMS providers, we're over on the left-hand side of this graphic. And so in many cases, CPaaS has actually helped our business. Um, they have provided a new channel of sorts of, of new traffic. 
and that's coming from you know the CPAS customers on on the other end. But I think what's important to recognize is what we're missing out on. So if we think about the traffic and, and how we're making money as an organization, we're, we already know that we're not making any money on the over-the-top applications. And if I'm honest with myself and I look at the incremental revenue I've gotten from the CPAS growth, that's great. But on a per minute type of basis, um, the margins are still really low. But what's happening is through the CPAS platforms, you're seeing significant high margin types of applications being consumed by the enterprise. So things that might only, I might only make tenths of a penny to go across my network, somebody's charging 25 cents for. And so how can I take I think the question we need to ask each other is, is how can I participate in that higher margin business and bring that value to my customers rather than having someone else do that and not really participate in that opportunity. So what we've looked at and what Raul has, has kind of teed up and shared with us is this concept that we refer to as CPAS enablement. And so what we mean by that is that each of you with your current business are very successful with what you've already deployed. You have you know, high quality networks. Um, you have um, customers on those networks. You already have your MSAs in place. You're just missing certain parts of the CPAS story or certain features that may not be there. And so when we talk about CPAS enablement, what we talk about is basically kind of the marrying or partnering of your network and your assets with the technology that it takes to then leverage those assets to make for happy customers. And so as, as we look at this, that's what we talk about CPaaS enablement. And so um, I think many of you are probably closer to uh, being a full-fledged CPaaS than, than you might think because of the fact that you already have these assets and these components already operational. Now, I always like to take just a moment and, and talk a little bit more um, about messaging, um, just because it is such a high growth area. And we often think of, of messaging as just texting on our phones. What we're recognizing is that it is a significant business tool that fits really, really well within the workflow of an enterprise. And I'm not going to go through each of these, but you can see by the slide here that there's been a lot of research done, and frankly, the customer prefers SMS and messaging over voice in most cases. And as we um, reach out to a younger generation, I would ask you, when's the last time your son or daughter called you versus texted you? Um, if you're like me, um, it happens on probably about a 50 to 1 ratio. And so how are we um, interfacing and working with um, you know, this new generation of consumer is, is critical. As we look at that um, and we look at the enterprise, Everybody often asks me, you know, what's, what's the killer application? If you can give me the killer application, I can take this to market and I can sell it. But what we've found is that every business that we interface with basically has five significant messaging needs. Um, every company needs to remind somebody of something. Every company needs to alert somebody of something. Um, you need to get authorization for things. You need to confirm things. And then within our own internal communications, um, being able to use messaging as, as part of your um, UCAS or instant messaging platform to talk to the outside world are all really critical use cases. So I can just about guarantee that you could walk into any one of your business customers and ask them, who do you need to remind? You know, is 
or am I alerting a, a customer that a package is arriving? Um, am I alerting someone from the support group that um, some service is, we're out of service, and so we immediately need to, to let them know. Um, so there's a you know there's a plethora of, of specific use cases when you start peeling the onion back on these, on how you can take messaging into um, the enterprise. And um, so we see this as, as kind of the low-hanging fruit, um, easy way to, to walk into the CPaaS space with your business customers. So as we look at it from the enterprise perspective, um, I've had the unique experience of, of going with some of our service provider partners and uh, being a part of their meetings with their enterprise customers. And um, the consistent feedback that we've gotten nearly every time is that um, as we look at this digitalization of the enterprise, there's the strategic view of how can I better engage my customers? Um, Omnichannel is absolutely critical today. How can I mix messaging and voice, and in some cases video, and how can I come in and out of each of those as part of a workflow or an IVR flow? Um, how does communication fit into my overall digitalization strategy? Um, how can I better um, enable my business processes? Uh, these are all key things that are being discussed and thought through at a strategic level within the organization. However, the flip side of that and what we're seeing is, is that each division inside the organization has its own needs and it's moving forward. So the marketing group has gone and contracted with some SMS provider to do outbound marketing. Um, HR has done something similar with a different vendor to interact um, with their prospects that are coming in. The support group has done something separate for their call center. Salesforce has done integration into their CRM system. And what's happening is each of these divisions are now coming back to the IT group and saying, um, I've made this decision, we're implementing it, I now need you to administer it. You, can you operate this for me? And so you basically have this, this mess of all these different technologies, different platforms, different price points, different vendors, but now looking back to the IT group to say, hey, I need some help. And so what it really reminds me of is, you know, 15, 20 years ago when the web started developing, we had the same problem. We had a ton of point solutions inside our IT organizations. And then, you know, this, this platform WebSphere came along, um, JBoss came along, and you had these application servers that could handle all of these different point solutions. The same thing is now happening in the enterprise. And so to Raul's point, we look at CPaaS 2.0 as kind of a communications app server inside the enterprise that allows them to manage this omni-channel experience for the customer engagement that they're looking to, to present. And so there's a huge opportunity for those that can provide a single tool for the enterprise to manage all of these new use cases with. Um, I'd like to take a minute and just highlight one of our partners and what they've been able to do and what we've learned together with them. Um, Many of you may know Mettel, um, based out of uh, Manhattan in New York City. Um, you know, they have well over 10,000 enterprise customers. Um, you know, they're, they're a very established um, service provider. And as we've engaged, what they started seeing is that these enterprise customers of theirs were headed down this DX strategy of, you know, digital transformation. And they were looking at how the call center fit with the different divisions within the organization and that this trend was, is, is already happening. And they started recognizing that it was happening over their network with their phone numbers, but you know, with, without them. The other thing that um, was an interesting data point is that all things being equal, the enterprise would prefer one vendor to work with. They'd like to consume these advanced services similar to how they consume their traffic today. They'd like to pay by the per minute 
or by the message, by the user. And so being able to, to simplify that process was really important as, as a way to move these enterprises from just being a network customer to you know, a, a CPATH user. And so if you look at what you know, Mettel brought to the party, they had all these businesses, um, they felt that they could solve, um, because of this connectivity, the ability to allow the enterprise to consume CPAS services as a telco service. So this is just an addendum to the MSA. So the contract process is super simple. The pricing is just another line item. Um, so it's very comfortable for them to be able to take this into their customers. And they already had the channels in place with the relationship with these stakeholders. And what I would um, really, um, what I've really felt in these meetings is that I've recognized that these enterprises, these businesses, they're absolutely betting their entire business on their relationship with their CSP. So the relationship of trust that you already have with your customer is probably as high as any vendor they're working with. You both know that if they're down for even minutes, let alone hours, their business goes away. And so they have to trust you literally with their, with their whole business. And so that becomes you know, a really great place to start this conversation, is you have that relationship in place and can now you know, move it forward and, uh, and, and upsell and, and take advantage of that opportunity. Um, one of the reasons that Mettel engaged with us um, is that we've got this history with, with CPAS and the technology. And so if you look at the investment that the current retail CPAS players are making, it's very dis difficult for most CSPs to replicate that. Well, in our case at Telestax, that's the only thing we're doing. So we're spending millions of dollars um, investing in making um, our platform the best CPaaS platform out there. And within our CPaaS enablement model, what we do, our whole goal is to be a white label partner for you. And so it allows Mettel and others to really push your brand with your installed base. And we're working in the background to support that. Um, our pricing model also supports that. We recognize that we're um, you know, a, a, an extra layer. We're a wholesale um, as part of the map. And so our pricing reflects that so that there's an opportunity for you to take our pricing, your network, your model on top of that, and increase your margins. And ultimately, the goal also is to help push all of that traffic back to your network. So the current CPAS players typically want you to buy their phone numbers and take the traffic off of your network. We're hopefully a tool that's driving more traffic across your network. And so that was another reason why it made sense to, to partner up. And then as the kind of number one open source community platform out there, we have tons of developers associated with RESTCOM. And so we're able to provide interesting new use cases, and we have third parties that have built solutions on top of us that you can also take to market and, and resell. And so it really does become a partnership in how we can work together to help CPaaS enable you and, and your network. So let's take just a quick minute and um, ask a, a, a few simple questions you've heard quite a bit about uh, CPAS over the last 45 minutes. Do you see CPAS now as, as, as kind of a, a necessary evil? Um, is this something that you can see makes sense to bundle with your current services and um, a way to kind of keep the customers you have? So maybe it's defensive. Um, do you see it as a way to upsell new services, new features to your install base? Um, or do you recognize the paradigm shift that Raul um, walked us through and recognize that this is really a strategic um, decision and something that you really do need to, to move forward with? 
So I'll give you just a, a moment here, and then uh, we'll be wrapping up here in just a, a couple of minutes, and so we can open it up for questions. All right. So just to give you a sense of of where the uh, the answers are coming. Um, Makes sense. Being able to bundle with a current customer base, but recognizing that things are changing. I, you know, on the changing side, again, if I if I look back 15 to 20 years ago, we'd never heard of SIP, right? It was this new protocol. We had all these TDM switches. Now, every service provider out there has SIP in their network. You're not in business if you don't. The same thing is now transitioning in that. All of our enterprise customers would prefer to connect via API than at the network level. And so it's this API piece that is now going to become the next critical piece of your network to, to move this forward and be relevant um, as, as, as time goes on. Um, just some quick background on, on Telestacks. We're about a 50 plus organization, very global. Um, as I mentioned, we run the, the largest open source community out there that's allowed us to build what we refer to as the only full stack CPaaS. So we have technology that we, we it's 100% our own, all the way from the SS7 stack, all the way up through APIs, SDKs, um, design tools. So we're able to provide the entire solution for voice, um, WebRTC, and, and messaging. And so it allows us to be very aggressive and work with you as a partner to support specific use cases. So having the full stack of technology is a critical differentiator. Um, we've got great customers, you know, literally all over the world. Um, you could find our software in about 80% of the tier one um, providers out there. And now we're making all of that capability available to you via the, the cloud and, and RESTCOM 1. So in, in closing, I think the statement I would make is that um, no matter where you're at kind of in the, in the paradigm here, the, you're closer to being able to provide CPaaS services than you think. There's basically four layers that are required. You've got the network. You've got the installed base. What you need now is to connect CPaaS technology to that network and then get access to key use cases that you can then drive into that customer base and add value, um, improve that customer engagement um, for, for your customers. And um, so, you know, I think that's, that's the key message here is that uh, at Telstax, we're, we're here to help with that in any way we can, whether that's just one piece of our platform or the, or the whole thing. And um, we'd love to work with you and, and help you on this journey to uh, this CPaaS market that Raoul suggested is $6 billion in the next five years. So I think together we should go get our piece of that. So with that, Maria, I'll turn it back to you and um, let's, let's answer some questions. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Raoul. Thank you, Kevin. Um, any questions for our presenters, please do chat them in the Q&A uh, box located at the lower left-hand side of your screen. We do have one question uh, coming in, and this is for Kevin. Uh, what do you think about SMS and WhatsApp? Well, so I think there's a couple of different angles on it, right? So WhatsApp itself is really a peer-to-peer -peer, um, application, an over-the-top app application as it's been built out. Um, they've recently um, exposed some APIs, um, very limited, that there could be more of a business use case. Um, I think the critical thing is that today SMS, in my opinion, is the largest social network out there. It's universal. That works with everybody. But I could see where there are specific use cases potentially um, where a call center or someone may want to connect to one of the social media messaging platforms to gain access to that audience. Um, so from a CPaaS perspective, we see that as an additional channel to SMS. And um, so down the road, it may play a bigger role. But today within the enterprise, um, particularly in the U.S. market, SMS is, 
is the preferred solution um, today. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, looks like this question is for you, Raul. Uh, how do you see CPAS competing with RCS in the next couple of years? RCS deployments are growing and will soon be offered by the majority of operators. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my view is that RCS and uh, CPAS are actually uh, part of a bigger whole that represent the big opportunities for CSPs in, in the next five years. Um, and uh, there are some similarities there <clears throat> if you think about how uh, uh, a lot of the over-the-top services ha have evolved. They're basically making up for um, uh, deficiencies, if you will, in, in terms of, of uh, delivering communications. Uh, but uh, uh, RCS and, and CPAS, for, for that matter, because uh, uh, they work directly within um, the uh, networks. Um, I believe they can deliver a, a superior experience. So in other words, uh, I'm running here, but bear with me. I don't think they compete. I actually think they uh, complement each other. Um, I believe that RCS, uh, um, you know, if, if you look at it as, as the next uh, generation, uh, for example, for, for um, SMS, uh, it, it just fits really uh, naturally with uh, the business model for, for CPAS. I, I, I hope that answers the question, Maria. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, another question. Another few questions coming in. Uh, how long will it take? This is for Kevin. How long will it take to CPAS enable me? That's the beauty of this. Um, it's basically a SIP interconnect. And so we've gotten partners literally interconnected in a day. Um, obviously on the back end, um, the providers need to look at how they handle our CDRs and the billing aspects for their internal usage. But to connect to our platform, it's literally connecting your voice network or your SMS network to us, um, either via SIP or SMPP, and we have you connected. With our message exchange um, for UCAS, we've connected people in as little as 15, 20 minutes. Um, so it's not a heavy integration. Um, it's very straightforward. Okay. So another question coming in. Uh, security wasn't mentioned uh, in the body of the presentation. What certification, what certification excuse me, and or compliance does your platform uh, slash network have? Sure. So there's probably another layer of detail here that we could take offline, but at a high level, um, we're a typical kind of SaaS operational model. And so with the architecture that we have, the customers have an opportunity to host their applications um, on, in their own data center, on your network, and then we use traditional security protocols in how we operate with those. And so it's not like we expect all of the applications to run directly in our data center or in our cloud. Um, we're able to interact um, in, in a number of different ways. So um, all of the, the typical um, security protocols are absolutely followed within, within our CPaaS offering. Okay. Another question coming in, uh, again, this is for Kevin. Uh, how is Telestack different than Twilio? Yeah, so from a business model standpoint, very different. Um, uh, we're here to help others keep and, and grow their customer base. Um, from a feature perspective, very, very similar. And so the idea is, from our standpoint, is not just Twilio, but looking at you know, the whole market. We're engaging directly with the enterprise through our partners and understanding their needs. And so our objective is to always have that rich feature set that the enterprise customer absolutely needs to consume these services. But you know, today at a feature feature standpoint, very, very similar to Twilio, but the business model is significantly different. Okay. Uh, let's see, any other questions coming through? 
Uh, we got to thank you. So <laughs> that answered and answered the question. Any more questions coming through? So, a question for Raul. Um, if if your if your service provider and you're looking to um, augment or add or you know do any of the things that you talked about in in the coming the coming years, and if you were to choose maybe one or two things, what would they be? I didn't get the last part. If I were to choose, okay. Um, which services would you choose to, to focus on, Raul? Oh, okay. Um, I, I think ma mainly uh, right now what we're seeing uh, on top of uh, what enterprises are, are looking for is anything related to uh, enabling the customer interaction. So right now, uh, messaging is definitely uh, the bulk of it. Um, if I were to pick a second one where uh, we expect there will be significant growth and you know just offer exciting opportunities, it could be related to uh, uh, voice uh, commerce. Uh, so anything related to uh, speech enabled uh, applications. So you know any um, uh, think of it as, as a chatbot but uh, using voice uh, rather than, than messaging. Uh, I, I think that's going to be huge in the next couple of years. Okay. okay. Uh, Raul or Kevin, any parting thoughts for our audience today? Uh, well, if I may, Kevin, just uh, quickly, I think that um, uh, looking um, how uh, Kevin kind of uh, concluded the, the session, I could really highlight the relevance of the business model. I think that the traditional uh, or, well, the, the, the platform business model that uh, has made Twilio so successful will continue to be successful, but it is evolving. And that's where I see the opportunities for, for CSPs. Uh, so, in other words, not replicate, but rather adapt uh, uh, what works best for CSPs uh, from that model. Okay. And Kevin? Um, no, I just want to thank everyone for their time and um, you know, look forward to some follow-up questions and conversations. As I think the key, maybe the last message, is that neither one of us can do this alone. And so, you know, let's figure out a way to, to work together to, uh, to really take advantage of this new paradigm that we're seeing in the communication space and uh, do it as partners. So just really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, this concludes our live webinar event for today. I want to thank everyone for joining us and taking time out uh, of your busy schedules to spend an hour with us. For more information, please visit telestacks.com or you can message Kevin directly at the email that you see on your screen. Thanks so much, everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>